Hello, everyone, and welcome to the live FIJEF Wine Talk. My name is Wolfgang Junglas. I'm the president of FIJEF, the International um, Federation of Wine and Spirit Journalists and Writers. Our subject is viticulture in Israel, history and up-to-date information about a fascinating wine culture. Experts from the Holy Land will enlighten us to how cro wine growing is done under Mediterranean conditions. My dear friend and FISHEF member, Zaki Cooper, will give us now an introduction to viticulture in Israel. Zaki, we met first in 2015 at the Michelangelo Wine Award in Stellenbosch, where we both were judges. You have been writing about wine and spirits since 2000, and you have published several books and co-authored the Comprehensive Guide to Israeli Wines. Zaki, what can you tell us about the history of wine growing in Israel? Well, first of all, thank you very much, Wolfgang. And uh, wine in Israel, it's actually wine in, uh, <clears throat> in the Holy Land or wherever. And I, have, I don't have a, long, uh, a lot of time here. It's just eight minutes, as we uh, said. And I have to cover about 4,000 years of winemaking. So met, better get on with this. Um, some basics. Israel, um, uh, the Holy Land, the Palestine, call it what you want, is part of the uh, Fertile Crescent and as such has been a source of wine uh, since very early ages. Um, it's divided in several regions. This is the official wine map of Israel. And what's unique here is that it's a very long and narrow country. So you have lots of microclimate or micro zones, which make things interesting. Okay. We don't know when things started, but we do have things um, evident from about 4,000 years ago. This is a Canaanite palace that was dug, uh, found and dug out in uh, quite a number of years ago. And uh, there were rooms there to prepare wine, to prepare jugs, to clean them and so on. And um, the archeologists counted enough jars to make, to hold about 2,000 liters of wine. This is 4,000 years ago. It's been very well preserved. Of course, we don't have wine, but um, they, they did try to find out what these people drank and couldn't, as far as I know. 2,000 years ago, the industry gets a little bit larger. This is already um, at King Herod's palace in Herodion. That's not too far from Jerusalem. And um, these jugs, jugs here, um, and there were tens of them, uh, each hold about 1,000 liters. And if you take this into account, then Herod must have drank a lot of wine and his guests were pretty well uh, covered. And we don't know exactly how many jars were there, but the assumption is in between 40,000 liters uh, at any given time. That's 2,000 years ago. Then uh, about 1,500 years ago, this is the peak of the um, wine, wine industry in, uh, in the Holy Land. This is in the desert, it's not far from uh, Yatil. Um, and what you see here is a wine press from Byzantine times. This is more or less when the industry peaked. Then it fell quite, quite sharply uh, due to two uh, events. One is the uh, Justinianic plague in the 6th century and the other one is of course the Islamic conquest of the Holy Land which uh, severed all the contacts, all the connections we had with Europe so there was no more export market and of course there were no more pilgrims and people stopped drinking, uh, stopped more or less drinking wine. Things changed again um, about 150 years ago with Carmel which was the first real modern winery to um, <clears throat> manufacture table wine. Until then, there were mostly sacramental wines or sacramental wine wineries, uh, small ones in Jerusalem and around Jerusalem. And this is uh, Baron de Rothschild's works um, here in uh, Zichon and Rishon Lezion. Rishon Lezion is, is near Tel Aviv, it's not far from Tel Aviv, it's in the center of Israel. And Zichon is near Haifa in the northern part. And the guy you see here, the little, this, this, this little guy here, the seller hand is David Ben-Gurion, who would later become the first prime minister of Israel. So it's, 
it was a very pretty um, important winery. The Golan Heights Winery is the what we call the second revolution of winemaking um, in Israel. Um, after about a hundred years of monopoly by Carmel, um, the Golan Heights Winery was established in Katrin, and it is, as it was, a very terroir and quality oriented winery rather than Carmel that was uh, oriented mostly on the table, low end and uh, sacramental wines. The second revolution or what happened 25 years ago is quite interesting. And what we see is um, <clears throat> sort of uh, boutique winery revolution. There are many, many uh, boutique winemaker or boutique wineries established around about 2000, 2005. And uh, we are run now, um, we are about 300 or there are about 300 wineries in Israel. Of course, not of, all of them are commercial, but still there are. Um, it's interesting to see that the new wine areas that, are def that were uh, defined by the uh, young winemakers of today, let's say, uh, correlate very, very nicely with all these ancient wine presses that we see across the country. Here in the Golan Heights, if you can see my cursor, uh, in the Golan Heights, you see small dots. This is where wine presses are. And this is, again, this is one of the uh, wine regions today. And here along the shore, there is another region. And here uh, in Zichon Yaakov, or in the, um, in the vicinity of, of Haifa, and again in the desert. I think I'm more or less about on, an, on time here. So I just want to wrap it up. This is the map. Someone did a very nice map uh, of the wineries in Israel. So there are about 300, 320 of them. And um, you can always come and visit once this plague is over and the sky is open again. Um, if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to write to me. And of course, the presentation will be available um, online and in my site at this uh, particular uh, web address. Dear Saki, thank you very much. Um, I must admit, I didn't know all that. Um, quite fascinating. What does interest me as well is how important is wine consumption in uh, society, in uh, everyday culture in Israel? The per capita consum wine consumption is about uh, 4.5 to 5 liters. Uh, it depends on who's counting and how. It's very important to religious people. It's part of the, uh, it's part of, uh, the, there are no sacraments in, in Judaism, but it's part of the uh, religious uh, sacrament, let's put it this way. Um, so, Wine does have a lot of, lot of importance. So when uh, uh, people from Israel go out into a restaurant, what are they order to drink with their dinner? Will it be wine or beer then? Oh, it depends on the age and the, and the opportunity. Uh, wine mm. in restaurants is sadly very, very expensive. Mm. Maybe not as expensive in Germany, but it's pretty expensive. So um, people tend to drink less in restaurants. Um, but it's becoming, wine by the glass has become sort of a, uh, a good thing now. So maybe this will add up to the consumption once the restaurants are all open and people begin to, you know, hang out again as they used to. Okay, thank you very much, Saki. I'm quite impressed about the history of Israeli wine.